Welcome to Knife Chats. If you like this video, please take a moment to leave a comment and give it a thumbs up. Thank you. If you follow my channel, you probably saw a couple of videos I've done in the past on Air Force knives, and um, I thought that's what I would do this time, except today what I'm going to be doing is talking about uh, a couple unsung heroes of the Army Air Force back in World War II, and that is a couple pocket knives that were used by the um, U.S. Army Air Force. And unlike so many other uh, knives that were used by the military, both of these tend to fly under the radar and people kind of miss them uh, unless they know what they're looking for. Uh, in this case, both of these are made by Camillus, but other companies also made them. Uh, and they're really knives that just came right off the shelf and were put into military use. Now, obviously, this knife by the, used by the U.S. Marine Corps is very easy to spot, and people are, are very aware of that. But these two knives here, they look like just regular old pocket knives. In fact, one of them is just a Camillus fish knife, uh, and the other one is a Camillus Stockman. Um, but these knives were actually used by the United States Army Air Corps uh, back during World War II. In fact, what this knife is, this Stockman, the, the cigar-shaped Stockman, um, it has a, uh, a spear master blade, a, uh, a sheep foot blade, and then uh, finally it has a, uh, a pin blade for the third blade on it. Um, is just like any other Camilla Stockman of this pattern. Uh, what sets it apart a little bit, they, one of the key signs that it was probably used during World War II is if you notice it has um, um, carbon steel uh, liners and spacers instead of brass liners and spacers. And, um, and then we see here the, uh, the Ford line tank stamp, which was used uh, in the 30s and 40s. And and you also notice that it has the uh, black composition handle or, or Delrin or Bakelite, whatever you want to call it, type of handle. A celluloid handle, as you can tell, it has definitely shrunk from gassing out and stuff. Uh, but this was typical of the uh, knives that were being issued to uh, U.S. Army Air Force personnel during uh, World War II. Um, can I say 100% sure that this knife was used during World War II? Absolutely not. But this is the type of knife that was being used. Um, other knife makers also made them. In fact, basically anyone who was making a Stockman, uh, especially the equal end Stockmans or the cigar shaped Stockmans, this is the ones that the Air Force was, uh, was um, contracting for. Um, were probably making them for the U.S. Army Air Force during World War II. Uh, this particular one is, like I said, is made by Camillus. Um, but I also know like Utica made them and um, probably K-Bar was making them, Imperial was making them. Anyone who could make a, a an equal in um, a Stockman was probably making them during World War II and selling them to the Air Force for their personnel. And usually you can spot them because there's no brass involved. Um, the knives made in uh, basically beginning, I think, 42, 42, 43, 44, had uh, steel liners in them because brass was at a shortage and they needed it for ammunition cases and stuff. And uh, in 43, the Air Force asked for them to stop putting bone handles on them because... Uh, uh, the temperature changes, uh, the weather, everything else, the bone would crack and everything else. So it really did not do very well when it was going from, um, um, you know, sea level up to 25, 30,000 feet where people were having to fly uh, with oxygen and stuff. The bone would uh, be in sub-zero weather and then it would lower down and it'd be down into, um, um, you know, suddenly you're in 80 degree weather again, the bones would crack and everything fall off the handles. Also, it had a really hard time um, in the Pacific um, with uh, corrosion and everything else. So that's why they ended up putting on the cheaper handles. Plus, it was a, a money-saving thing. Uh, so basically, if you're seeing a stockman that dates from sometime in the 40s, and if it has steel liners, there's a good chance that it was made for the U.S. Army Air Force. And this is a knife that was just issued to the personnel. Um, they did not use like um, 
like the camp knife or anything. They didn't need the can opener. They didn't need the punch or anything. But uh, three blades were useful for them, and that's what they ended up getting. So the, the Stockman was a very popular knife at the time. So um, that also played into it. So And they were readily available. So this is the knife that the Army Air Force chose as the pocket knife that they were just going to give to their crew. And they basically handed them out like bubble gum. So, uh, and they were not the best made knives in the world. So they do tend to fall apart and everything. And as you can tell, it's gassed out and everything else. I'm looking for a better quality one, but uh, these are um, like a World War II era, uh, US Army Air Force style stockman. Now let's look at the other knife. Okay, so now this is basically the uh, 05 pattern fish knife by Camillus. Now, other companies also made this knife uh, during World War II for the uh, Army Air Force. I know Ulster also made them. I'm not sure of other companies, but at least Ulster did. And once again, you see um, stainless steel, I'm sorry, carbon steel uh, liners for this knife and the um, the black celluloid handle that kind of looks like a uh, stag. And these knives were put in the emergency bailout gear for the uh, crews, uh, either the B2 or B4 bags. And uh, it was described as a, um, as a uh, small game knife or a small game and fishing knife. And um, it was also used by the uh, United States Navy pilots. You notice it's got the uh, fish scaler on the top and it's basically otherwise just a, a large fish knife or toothpick. Um, you got the liner lock there, uh, carbon steel liner lock, um, does stop the blade. And um, the interesting thing with it is you've got the clevis up here at the top of the bale uh, so that you would be able to tie it, a lanyard to it or tie it down to your gear and such. Um, notice the uh, integral uh, hook remover or yeah at the very end of the uh, knife the the powder horn of the knife acts as the hook remover and um, it's basically used for uh, if you bail out and you're behind enemy lines and you've got to you know catch fish or skin an animal or something that's what this knife is for it's obviously not really a fighting knife even though a locking blade would be a little more handy if you had to actually use it to fight but that's not what it was designed for it was designed for surviving off the land um, and despite how shiny this is it's actually a carbon steel blade i just happen to have one in really good shape um, carbon steel um, bolsters also basically carbon steel throughout again uh, the ones made in 42 43 44 that's the way they would have been uh, the one key the two key features you look for in this uh, fish knife to know that it would have probably been used during World War II or was designed for World War II is the uh, the, uh, the clevis at the top of the bale or the top of the knife, not at the bottom, and then the, um, the carbon steel uh, liners that are in there instead of brass liners. And the fact that, you know, there's no nickel silver uh, in the bolsters or anything. Everything in it is carbon steel. Um, and like I said, this was used as part of the emergency kit. I'm sure they also had a tendency to slip out of the emergency kit and end up in, uh, in crew pilots, uh, crew and pilot pockets, but that, that wasn't where they were supposed to be. They were supposed to be in the emergency kit. The, uh, knife that was supposed to be in the pocket was the Stockman. So those are the two knives, uh, that are basically unsung heroes from World War II. Uh, for the U.S. Army Air Force, a simple cigar-shaped uh, stockman and uh, the lowly fish knife, five-inch fish knife. Uh, so, something to think about. This is just a quick recap on the specifications of the two knives. The uh, cigar-shaped stockman was the Camillus S6018. Uh, the Air Force knew it as the 14J95C. It was produced from 1941 to 1945 with slight variations. This version was used from 1942 to 1945. 
Uh, overall length of the knife closed was 3 and 5 eighths of an inch or 93 millimeters. It featured a spear master blade which was 2 and 5 eighths inches long or 67 millimeters. A sheep foot blade that was 2 and an eighth inches long or 54 millimeters. And a pin blade that was 2 inches long or 51 millimeters. It featured uh, carbon steel blades, springs, spacers, pins, bolsters, and uh, a celluloid handle that was known as FG, uh, Foxtrot Golf, and it was a black jig bone handle that kind of looked like, I'm sorry, a black jigged handle that looked like bone or stag. And the second knife is the Liner Lock Fish Knife, which is number 5369 or L67B. It uh, was in service from 1943 to 1945. The overall closed length of the knife is 5 inches or 127 millimeters, and it features a California clip blade that's 4 inches long or 101 millimeters. The powder horn pommel of the knife features an integrated hook remover, and the top bolster of the knife features a hooked in clevis. And finally, the swedge on the spine of the knife acts as a fish scaler. And like most other wartime production knives, carbon steel is used throughout the uh, uh, build of the knife, including the liners, the spacers, the back springs, the bolsters, the clevis, and the blade itself. And the handle material is what Camillus called GNU celluloid. And that brings us to the end of this video on two unsung heroes of World War II, the Air Force's Stockman and Fish Knife. Thank you so much for joining us. I hope you enjoyed this uh, episode of Knife Chats. And if you did, please like and share it with your friends. Comments are always welcome. Don't forget to subscribe and ring that notification bell so you'll know when the next episode of Knife Chats is up online. Thanks again. Hope to see you soon.